My name's Mark Warman. I'm Darren Kirkpatrick. And we get paid to bring dead cars back to life. We work with my best friend, Royal, and my son-in-law, Josh. We search far and wide to find how a car was built, where it spent its life, and how it died. After that, we bring it back to look exactly the way it did on the day it was born. If we don't kill each other. Just shut your mouth before I actually punch you out. Can I leave a handprint on your face? Things are going really well at the graveyard. We got a lot of cars in the queue for the restoration. We're still falling in love with the uh, new Dodge Challenger from Hadler Group on behalf of Chrysler. Absolutely love that car. We got the Charger running. That means we're only a few days away from being able to drive it. We also happen to have a packed schedule. That means we've got to get the Charger out the door so we can get focused on some of the other cars. So we had a successful initial start for the 71 Charger. We ran it through the gears. We did have one minor problem, which was Dumb and Dumber didn't put the clips on the U-joint end caps, so it spit it out when I went to put it in park. But the way this thing looked, I, I remember when, you're, when you two beat this thing to death, like some kind of a death grudge match, WWE death grudge match, fight to the end. You beat be this careful. thing within an inch of its life. A U-joint is short for universal joint. Uh, it has four heads on it, four caps that rotate and allow the drive shaft to be able to go up and down and turn at the same time. I believe I may have gone uh, too far the other direction with it and that's why it's in a bind. Since I needed a new U-joint, I sent Josh and Darren over to Napa to get that while I could continue working on the rest of the pieces. Uh, once that's done, I'll install it and put the drive shaft back in the car. Are you driving, aren't you? Of course I'm driving. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, I'm hung up. What'd you do? Oh, I got hung up on the seatbelt. <laughs> that was weird, wasn't it? I'm capable of working on the car by myself without asking questions so I can get a lot done. Uh, they should be capable of going over to the parts store and picking up a part and bringing it back, although I've been surprised and sometimes they can. You need a U joint for a 71 Dodge Charger. I don't know exactly what happened. The U-joint broke. He's claiming that Darren and I are at fault for that. What else we need besides the U-joint? Anything? Nope. Ah, oh, there she is. Yeah, that's the one. There. That should be the beast. There's a lot of good stringling devices over here for you, Darren. This one will work. It's an antenna extension cable. Strangling, Darren. You don't get out often, do you? Anything else for you today? No thanks. I think that's it. Awesome. Thank you so much. So now we got our U joint and we're getting ready to head back. Come on, Darren. Next time. Come on. Thank you guys. Well, who made you boss? It doesn't matter. What does matter? I came to get the stuff that we needed. Mark was hungry, so he picked up Mark's Mark's favorite treat. Mark really likes these. So we thought we'd get them for him. This is a surprise. Do we have a big C clamp? A couple of years ago, you'd have done that by hand, right? No, I don't think I'd have done that one by hand, buddy. Oh, okay. That's a big one there. Okay. That's it. With the new U-joint installed in the drive shaft and the drive shaft now installed in the car, I can move on to the dash assembly. So are you mentally, mentally capable of installing this? I've waited to put the windshield in so it's a much I easier. I it goes like this. Really? It's a good assumption, good assumption. There should be a hole in there and so what I would probably recommend doing is setting the outboard ones into the metal. And the reason I've left the windshield out is because that's really easy to put on right now. Plus, you never know if you have to drop a dash back down later and then we'll just drill it out the three hole spots with a brand new quarter inch drill. The 
it's not a Rembrandt. Just put the thing in. <laughs> This was the exact same car I looked at when I turned 16. Charge! Got a 1971 Dodge Charger RT that is back on the road. So about a year and a half ago, I started looking for a set of aluminum cabinets or metal cabinets that would work in our assembly room so we can get organized. We're spending way too much time looking for pieces and parts and no room to put stuff together. So I got on the internet, I did some surfing around and I came across a company called Moduline and today uh, everything showed up. So me and the idiots are gonna start putting stuff together in the assembly room. You can make life easy for us or hard. I would say as they come off, they get folded up and carried out front and stacked nicely. Are you gonna do anything or are you just gonna sit there and catch God, you're me? a loser. This is gonna really change the face of graveyard cars, not just on the outward, but the fact that we have a place to put our stuff, that we can label it, that it'll always be there. It's not gonna grow legs or get moved from one corner of the shop to another. It really is gonna help us hone in our organizational skills, which is just imperative when you're putting as many cars together in a year as we are. We've been working for about four hours on packaging all the cabinets, and I'll say it's, it's like Christmas. I mean, every one you open, there's another big, beautiful package inside, but there's a lot of unwrapping to do. we have the cabinets installed, it's time to start working on the charger again. Josh Royal and myself are gonna start installing the back seats. So we're heading up to Oregon City today. A gentleman got hold of me a few weeks ago through our Facebook page, said he had an AAR Cuda he'd like to have restored. So I'm rounding up the guys and we're heading up there today to get the car and uh, check out his place. But it just shows you what a small world the Mopar world can be. The AAR Cuda basically stands for All-American Racing. It's a 340 small block engine with three two-barrel carburetors. And today it stands as one of the most collectible of the E-body muscle cars of all time. How you doing, Chris? Good, how Good you to doing? see you. Hey, my name's Chris Driscoll, and Mopar's spoken here. We open up the garage, and here's these just beautiful, classic Chrysler muscle cars that it just reel you back. And it's just what a Mopar nut does. He has a 70 Cuda in sassy grass green, very rare car. He's got a convertible 71 triple black Cuda. Good luck, 383 car. I mean, they just aren't out there. This is beautiful. Wow. wow. I, ne I never dreamed I'd find a black one. They uh, uh, apparently they only made four 
in black. He's got a 1970 Plymouth Cuda factory V-code 446 barrel shaker hood four-speed car. He's got a 1970 Dodge Coronet factory plum crazy Ram Charger hood with a white top and white guts. Beautiful car. This is a 70 Coronet RT. It's the rarest of all the B bodies, and a lot of people don't know that. They only made 2,300 of them. The cars that he has here, I think, are probably the most desirable cars, some of the most desirable Mopars on the planet, and they're all under one roof. Just actually being up close and personal with these cars, its he's taken such great care of them, and he loves them. He has a passion for them. It's a great collection. I'm very jealous and envious of them. As many cars as we do, we still don't get a chance to be this close to some of this rare car. I mean, these cars are just flat out amazing, beautiful pieces of American uh, culture. They're why I do what I do. One of the biggest kicks we got up there was with Chris's Hot Wheels track. This is a, uh, an original 1971 Hot Wheels track. Uh, this track is 22 feet long, and to scale, it's a quarter mile. The starting system is kind of cool. It, uh, it's 40 years old, uh, you know, actually red lights if you leave too soon. It's like real drag racing. And, and the flag drops at the end, so it tells you who wins. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. The bird. Oh, well, that's your track. You probably got some trick theme. Oh, God, here we go. Give me my car. People watch back through it are gonna realize that my car was actually the fastest. My finger was probably faster than lightning a little bit. Out of the corner of my ear, I heard a couple of guys saying lightning, you know, like lightning fast or something. And they were talking about my reaction time. That, you know, from the time the the impulse my brain said hit that button, my hand had already hit the button and had to let the impulse know that it was two seconds late to the game. So, you know, like that. It's like mm -mm, right? But the guy started to cheat. I didn't lose, it's just that they won. Mopars are the, are the fastest Hot Wheels, yeah, by far. That's the one that we're doing the restoration on, right here. I thought, you know, Mark would be the perfect guy to restore the car and do it justice and bring it back to its former glory. One of the things as I get into my hobby further and further is I'm constantly reminded of how much I love the backstories on some cars. Chris had probably one of the best ones I'd heard in many years. This car is very special. I feel like it was meant to be mine and I'm gonna bring it back. It was the first car I ever looked at when I turned 16. This is 1980. And I didn't buy the car then because it was so rough. And through fate or destiny or what have you, it found its way back in my life. And I bought the car 25 years later and didn't realize it was the same car until I started looking for some telltale signs. Same car, same missing chunk out of the hood, all the identifying marks that showed him that was the same lemon twist yellow A or four speed Cootie passed on. And then I realized, you know, the light bulb went on. This was the exact same car I looked at when I turned 16 and didn't buy then. This car's a numbers car, it's all original, it's got the original motor transmission, broadcast sheet, fender tags. It's a phenomenal project, and I'm honored that he chose us to do the restoration after this many years. Usually it's heartbreaking to see him go, but this time it's it's a good feeling, because I know it's coming back. It's, it's a priceless gem. I mean, maybe you could put a number on it, but you know, how do you sell a dream? Huge thank you to Chris and his wife, Sue, for having us over this weekend walking around and seeing all the beautiful colors and the cars and the combinations. Uh, I think it was a real positive day for everybody and recharged our batteries. After all that work, it's not the right cable. Josh! You dolphin face mongrel. Come right in under the middle.
of the things that we've never had a very good version of is a media blasting cabinet. There are a lot of companies that are making them, but I came across Bad Boy Blasters. We bought a seven foot long, four foot wide custom media blasting cabinet with four workstations, huge exhaust filter system. Uh, this thing is the Cadillac in the industry. So after unloading and unpacking everything, Mark Kane made a personal appearance from the East Coast, the owner of the company, to show us exactly what kind of medias we needed to use in the equipment, as well as how to use them in the right air pressures. This machine of here is, a, is an original. I mean, that's the only one we built. We've never built one like it before. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, this one is the first one we ever built of this. In blasters, they got what's called a reclaimer. Reclaimer separates out the bad media from the good media, but your reclaiming unit is massively expensive and all you're really wanting is something to remove the dust. So I made the floor as a reclaimer and the vacuum as a dust collector. If your media will go through that floor, it'll go through the gun. This is called a deflector. And the way I built this, I designed this so when the media hits it, it funnels it back in. I you see. notice you have very little uh -huh. media laying right, here because right. it just falls back in the cabinet. I see. Now you see how clean your media stays? You don't have any paint in your media? That's beautiful stuff. Yep. The first media that we put in the cabinet was one of Mark's personal products that he sells, and it was a plastic media, very tiny little minute plastic balls. And what they do is they strip the paint off of a panel without actually warping the panel, and that's one of the key things you have to worry about when you're doing sheet metal. Wow, man. Holy oh, cow. Look how quick that comes up. See, we'd spend, seriously, an hour with another machine on maybe, maybe two hours trying to get that done. I'm not kidding. That's more like you chemically stripped it. Metal, that is the original properties. There's no abrasion done. Yeah, no, that's took the, took the paint off of it. So I got the part number, see it? Yeah. That just looks like a brand new piece of metal. Mm -hmm. Looks like it went through the dipper. Right, that's what I'm saying. It looks yeah. like it came out of the dip tank. How much weight can you put in here safely? 500 pounds. I haven't even seen a blaster big enough to put a door in yet. You guys got that door in there. You wouldn't have to have it dipped. You could just buzz it with this and then go over it with some media. Okay, fire. Unbelievable. God. And which media is this? The plastic? This is the plastic. This won't warp that panel. So you, you could do this whole entire door in probably 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Feel that. That's however, whoever ground that door before they primered it. That's how they did it. Look at that. Hey, that leaves your original grind marks. Oh, Darren, he's spelling your name. Oh, how large. It's love, isn't it? Works pretty good, you huh? You do this on Darren's actual door. <laughs> Mark used to be a former boxer, uh, pretty successful one. He only lost a couple of fights in all the years that he that he was out there. Um, taught me a couple of quick moves, and uh, he was pretty impressed. Said I was uh, delivering some of them pretty good. No, I go no, no, no. You don't, you, don't have, you don't. You don't have your body turned right. Remember, your body's got to go here, so you get that pivot off the hips. Okay, so. Oh, I go. see. There you go. Okay, okay. and then you drive it with this leg. You yeah, you it. extend that leg out, man. So you should be able to bust through the arm. Whatever defenses he have, they should but, just but if, you, if you bust here, and you come up, boom, but it's Did 99, it seem man. Like it would really that, that's, like, that's like taking a big full bottle of NyQuil. <laughs> There's a three-rounder that'll take a guy out, uh, turn his lights out real quick. I call that the Novocaine. I used to fight out here when I first got into it. Then, then I just start bringing it in. It's and then everything's quick because now instead of throwing yeah. way out here, you're throwing in here. I'm only throwing shots. Yeah, that bar. Hurt. Okay. <laughs> Which one don't you recycle? He gets in nice and close like that. Soda blasting. Soda <laughs> blasting. <laughs> right. Novocaine. But now, see, you just made a mistake. I know. Come, come, <laughs> no, come, 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 come in. Come in. Come in. Show me how you're doing this. Well, well, don't hit me. I got a broken I won't, hand. I won't. I won't. I, I was in here working now on it. Now, see what I would do? I'd just come right up under the middle. Feel it. Feel that thing. What's the difference? Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> There are so many different kinds of media. It was really nice that Mark would take the time to come out and show us, look at what our needs were, and then tell us exactly what we need in the way of media. So you're pouring in the, the soda right now, and this is the stuff that we could use for, for stripping sheet metal that would warp right. with a regular aggregate. This, these machines have to run anywhere from 110 to 120. Now with a pressure pot, I can run it at 60 to 90, and I can get twice the media out of it. We've got more done in the last half hour than I think we have in two years on that other thing. Look at that. We're, we're using the DA to sand down the... Yeah, amazing. There. Your cars are high dollar, and if they may look good on the outside. Right. But if that metal underneath is not prepared right... I agree. You have a bad job. See, with this, we don't have to have something dipped. 
I can I can just take that part a door and put in there, clean it myself with the media, with the aluminum oxide, with soda, with whatever. And at the end of the day, I've just saved myself hundreds of dollars and I controlled the destiny of that part. I mean, we blasted with that plastic media for what? Half an hour, did you ever have a plug up? That's it has a where, plug one time on the that's, media. That's where our blasters just blow them all out of the saddle. Once we were done working on the media blast cabinet, we used the other two pieces of equipment that he sent us. One of them was designed that you could use it indoors that it had a vacuum system built into it. So when you do your spot blasting, it sucks it all back into the machine, recycles it for one, two as it isn't all over your shop making a dust mess. You see that checker look? That collects the big pieces of uh, debris. Whatever passes through that then goes into this filtration inside. So that will take up to a uh, 30 grit media. Now this is what they call brown aluminum oxide. Dollar for dollar, it is the best granule media built. How many pounds was that bag you just put in? There? 25 pounds. That's all you need in this. And that's all it needs? That's all really? it needs. It just recycles it, yep. Some guys will get 20, 30 hours out of running it. I mean, you do a lot of blasting. And oh, that's a lot of blasting. Now we need the power cord and we're ready. Okay. The main thing is getting it stripped. That's the biggest part of it, getting it stripped off of there and not making a huge mess when you do it or warping the panel. Then I come back with a DA and 80 and just crisp up that metal. It's like 30 seconds. It's just in, it's out, you're done. Amazing. Amazing. Yep. Wow. Now this is what's called a Chicago fitting. This has a lock on it. That'll never come loose because the hose is screwed on and then the screws go through it, through the aluminum into the rubber. Got it. That's totally safe. If you drop that for any reason, it shuts it immediately off. So what products will this one take? Anything. It'll run any of them. Okay. This machine is gonna take so much of the work out of what you're doing. That fender on the side, I'll do that in about five minutes. This, this area in here. This area in here. I'll, I'll do that in five minutes or less. Josh would spend a week or more doing what he's gonna do in half an hour, and that's the truth. Now that, my friend, is how you clean something wow. down. Look at that, doesn't that look like brand new? He could actually get in all the small recess areas, the inside curves that I could not normally get onto. Normally, if you use the grinder, you lose that, right? You yeah. go up against it and cut it out. You can actually see all these cars that say they're OE. That's not OE, that's OE. That car's never been apart. It looked exactly like an original OEM engine compartment, including leaving the factory seam sealer intact that most people argue it never had. But if you've seen an engine compartment that's never been restored, it definitely has seam sealer oozing out of the upper cowl panel where it meets the firewall. His media and his blaster left that intact. Having Mark out here was just a, a real treat for everybody. He's got a great sense of humor, but more importantly, he's super knowledgeable about what he's making and what he's selling. After taking Mark back to the airport and waving goodbye, it was time to get back to business. So the first thing to do was to have the windshield replaced in the 71 Charger RT six pack car. So only a few guys around town that I trust to do that. Uh, Trifer Auto Glass was one of them. So I gave a call over to Tristan and I asked him if he could get over today and get that glass put in. Uh, he dropped what he was doing and headed over to install the glass. And what you guys took an hour to do, I just did in three seconds. We got another problem there, Chief. Got a 1971 Dodge Charger RT that is back on the road. These are the seat belt escutcheons. So you're gonna clean all these with the little brush, rinse it till it's squeaky clean both sides, set it aside, do that to all these. So I needed to run some errands across town. Uh, that meant leaving the Three Stooges alone, which is fine, they can sometimes get along on their own. So as soon as you, I get back, I can dye these. These all have to go the factory green, like this. These need to be installed while he's doing that. Oh, I like how they're labeled. They are labeled, that's, that's good. Excellent. I labeled everything that I needed to have done and exactly where they went, so there was no room for error. Those aren't easy to put in, probably. No, they're right? not easy to put in. Josh got something easy to do. He's gonna take a little toothbrush and clean some little seatbelt covers. He wants me to work on the dash. That doesn't sound like any fun, does it? Let's just go inside the car and I'll just show you real quick. So this upper one is for the heater defroster. That makes sense to you? You have a cable 
that says heater defroster. So you're gonna take that cable, you're gonna lift that up out of there, and you're gonna go there. Then that just lifts off of there. This comes off, and once you on the new cable, and it's pop this out of there, and once you have it out, you'll see how. This is a vent over here. Okay, I expect to see all that done when I get back. Looked to me like all systems were go, so I could go run my errands. More or less, I understand what I'm supposed to do. I don't even know if I'm gonna get this on here or not. Hey, Josh! Josh! Hey, buddy! Josh! Yes, honey? Can you come here, please? Oh my God, what? Get in here before I drag you in here. Is that better? <laughs> please get in here. What? Can you find me a ratchet for this? Oh my God, please, dude, are you, you serious? Well, look, I don't You're think- You're screaming bloody murder at me in hey, there. Hey, Josh, please get me a ratchet. Okay, buddy. I understand you need help, buddy. I think it's kind of cool too that Mark's gone doing his own thing and he kind of left us alone and hey, kind of trust us to get stuff done, so. Yeah, buddy. Did you find the wrench? I did, buddy. Thank you, Frank. Buddy. Okay, Darren, if you need me, make sure to scream bloody murder like you've been doing. I think you should be helping me just, but nothing else, just standing here for moral support. Oh no, is that not, oh, you know, oh boy. Oh geez, oh gosh, you know what? golly, golly gosh, son of a. Mark said that was a defrost cable. It's not long enough, that after all that work, it's not the right cable. I was looking forward to getting back, taking a look at the progress the guys had made. Uh, I knew that with the small tasks, especially as detailed as they were, those would at least be done so we could move on to the next stage of the assembly. He said that was the defrost cable, did he not? You know what, he can fix it this time. Do you guys not read the labels though? Oops, that says temp on there, does it not? Hey Mark, did you not tell me that was the defrost? Maybe it's my fault. Not, not only did I not say that, but I actually labeled them. Oh, I know, but I think I put the wrong one on. Got the cable on, wrong cable on in the wrong location. What is he talking about? Is he just crazy? I need to know what you've done here. I put the wrong cable in the wrong location. It's okay. marked! You see it as well as I see it? You admit there's a cable in my hand right now? Okay. Where is that connected on the temperature selector switch assembly? Across. And what's the problem with that? I think it's too short. Why? It goes right there where it says heat defrost. Well, so I'm not mentally messed up then. You're more messed up than not because you're screwed up thinking you screwed up and you didn't even screw up. I don't mind the frustration of the guys not being able to do something right. I've kind of grown accustomed to it. But when they do something right, tell me they did it wrong and I have to go back in and figure out that they had done it right. That's a whole new level of frustration for me. I didn't mess up. Well, I never mess things up. Even when I'm wrong, I'm still right. Today's been absolutely crazy. It started out at seven o'clock for me while the rest of these idiots are sleeping. So I left Tweedledum, Tweedledee in charge of putting in four cables. Darren amazingly thought he had actually put a cable in wrong because he couldn't read. Only one guy on the planet can dye stuff and make it actually stick. And you're looking at him. <laughs> Same guy that single-handedly runs the entire collision shop by himself, hey, orders right. the parts by himself, installs the parts by himself. And I had to order parts for just every car that was here. I had to check the parts that already came the day before. Uh, if I'm not doing that, I'm running up in the office, babysitting Suzanne, who can handle little to nothing, babysitting my granddaughter, who can't speak full sentences yet. I was speaking the entire sentences at three months. I was potty trained at birth, and I could actually spell in the womb, so. You know what we need to get back to is violence. I think it's all anybody understands anymore is just violence. Nope, now I'm gonna play baked potato, baked potato, two, four, six, eight, potato. You want some of this? You I didn't back off, did I? Nova Kane, you? The main thing I remembered from Mark Kane's visit from Bad Boy Blasters was the combinations. Uh, but those stuck with me, and I realized that I can use them as a motivational factor in my daily process. Nova Kane, one brings you over, one takes your jaw out, and that one just drives you to the ground. I think in light of the fact that Darren may have had a stroke, I'm gonna have Royal put together the rest of the under dash stuff and make sure the lines are going where they're supposed to. So what I've got is Royal installing the new cables, new replacement cables that control the temperature in the vents and the defrost. And he's reassembling the dash that I had to take apart to be able to get the three speed wiper out. I got Josh out back grabbing all of the nuts that hold the seats to the floors off of the 71 because they're the correct ones, plating them correctly and getting ready to install them. And Darren's finishing up the driver's door panel so we can install it. Hey Mark. Can I ask you about the armrest, please? Okay. <laughs> I'll set everybody up. Oh, oh man. Well, no, we're just trying I'll to help just you. Shut we're up, to shut help up, you. shut up, shut up. 
it's really starting to get frustrating that when I'm trying to get something done, the guys are always tapping me on the shoulder, Mark, what's this, what's that? It really impedes my ability to get stuff done, and it's growing more and more frustrating every day. Well, hey, Mark's going one. somewhere Mark, it shouldn't go. Hey, buddy. It's supposed to come over here to that. Mark, hello. What? What, what? what? Why are you yelling? Why are you bothering me? I'm trying no, so hard I, to no, finish no, this. I was just trying to see All right, what do you got? Next. Wow. Yeah. I'm sorry, what'd you Did need? Did you do something to him, Royal? You're actually worse than an actual child. Cause you just keep and you keep and you blast and you blast. Daddy, daddy. God damn it. Daddy, daddy. <laughs> Here. We're trying to find everything to be able to do our job. Mark's trying to work on something and get something done and he can't because everybody's, you know, wanting want to know where all the parts are. I've already got done the first thing on my list today and that was to get the seat track bolts out of the Challenger out back. So I'm still writing everything down that Mark gives me word for word. Seat track nuts, check. Cleaned and plated, check. Operation organization is a battle, and it's a battle I'm determined to win. You want me to do it, Tag? No! Is it too much for you? Okay, how does it look? Look okay? One of the things, of course, most people love about the Chrysler muscle cars are the wild colors. I love them too. What I don't love is trying to find 40-year-old parts that match the interior color. In the case of our 71 Charger, we got a green car with a green interior. That means every component in the interior has to be green. Seat belts, garnish moldings, coat hangers, things that they don't reproduce. But that's the part I do love. When it's done, it's beautiful. And of course, as soon as I go back to finishing my project, here comes Darren. You right. might want to do this, Mark. This, this has got to- Okay, I'll do this. No, this has got to cut out. Okay. I don't want a brainless person to run it. That on there. I thought you used the razor blade and stuff for a reason. Looks like a beaver got in there and just carved a hole with their teeth. Okay. Uh-oh. Just being as frustrating as humanly there, possible. Chief. You gotta cut off the lock knob. That needs to be installed. Yeah, that's right. You know, you got your knobs up through there. This right here is what I'm talking about. And that's gonna show. Or does it have a little thing that goes in there? It must, huh? And it's probably green and you don't have it. This room's just not big enough for all three of us. And none of them can do anything without asking me. They could, they're both pretty bright guys, they could, but they choose not to. They choose just to, they look for the next part they're ready for. I might as well put it on the time he takes. Well, that looks pretty darn good. Okay. Go ahead and put the window crank, window base. No, oh, oh, what's the yeah, problem here? too much, right? No, okay. no, I'm just asking, is there a problem here? Something not in? There, well, there you go, okay. Just handle it, man. That's well, just... no, I didn't know without, okay. Do you have a new crank? I wish I had Viagra for brains. I'd just spike everything those guys eat and drink for the next eight weeks on it. Dude, if this was a real gun, where'd he go? <laughs> that car, in some cases, would have been smashed at the wrecking yard and turned into a soup can. What's going on, man? Keeping the team motivated and focused is very important, and sometimes everybody just gets at their wits end. Uh, in the case of today, I felt like I should take everybody out, get their batteries recharged, let them have some delicious coffees. He's dumb, he's bald, and he's too tall. Because this afternoon and tomorrow, we got our hands full finishing this car. You got you I'd like one of my usuals, please. And um, I'd give him a blended. you warm. I don't have <laughs> like a whale, like a blubber for added insulation from the coldness of the water. So this is what I get, huh? <laughs> yeah. Ascension. Thank you, 
my man. Absolutely. All right, yeah, appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Put a hood on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. I wanted whipped cream. We'll go back and get it. Not get some of it. Things are going awesome today. Uh, Darren and Mark are just... If you say anything about this, I'll smash your skull in. I just want to do my job. <laughs> hey, Darren, just leave him be. Um, there's a lot of name calling going on, a lot of put downs, a lot of put downs. <laughs> I think it's really funny that Mark's getting so pissed off. Why? God, it was all going so good. What is its problem? <laughs> no, nah, it. it's just not doing it. It's not playing that. <laughs> not today. The seats are taking a long time to get done. We don't have a long time. We have no time. And it's really pissing Mark off really bad. Yeah. Have to be always out of something somewhere. I'm going to order up $44,000 worth of screws. $44,000 worth. No, you didn't. No. No, you dolphin face mongrel. I didn't. I said I'm going to. He's the boss, and he's trying to get this stuff done on time. You know, he's trying to get us going quick, quick, quick. Nobody knows where Royal's at. There's a parade going on. He had mentioned something about it, but I don't know if he's still there or if he got tired of. I want you to just. Where the f is Royal? He's at the parade. That's bullshit. So I go out, buy everybody coffees, which is kind of me, very sweet of me. And Royal takes his coffee and doesn't come back to the shop. He jams off to the local parade. So what? They'll have a parade every year. He should be down here putting this car together, not out gallivanting around with his grandkids at a parade. There's plenty of time for that. Come on. Hey, Josh, how's it going? You. Hey, dude, hey, what's up? Really? Mm. How's the parade going? Get that what? glove box. That's bullshit. That's existential bullshit. I don't know why everybody freaked out when I came in here. I told them I was taking my lunch and going down to watch the parade with my grandchildren. Were they even there? Yeah, they were there. I held them the whole time. So he's down here at the parade with his existential bullshit, acting like he really cares that he's there. The only reason he cares that he's there is because he's not here. Existential, that's a new word for you, isn't it? No, it isn't a new word for me. It's an older word for me. Punching you in your bald vacation and going down to the Springfield Parade and head, that's new for me. I don't care if they think it was fair or not if I got to go. I was going to go spend time with my grandchildren. I've got a passenger seat ready to go in, but guess what? It can't go in. Do you know why? Because Royal was down at a parade. Come on, you guys. You don't got to be like that. So once Royal had showed back up from the parade, we were able to get back on task for the charger. That meant making holes in the carpet for the seats and the seat belts, wrapping up the final interior trim pieces, and buttoning this thing up. Can we put seats in yet? Almost. OK, and you, did you get the jack in here? Yes, I did, Mark. All right, so the next thing we'll need is that door down, too. And I still got to do the reveal molding. So I'll do the reveal moldings right after this, and you guys can put the seats in. Cool. Maybe we could have got an extension. Go, 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 go. Get it started by hand. You know what? I like asked him go, if he wanted go, to use go, this go, and he feels go. uncomfortable go, using go, it, Mark. Go, 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 go. God, dude, if this was a real gun, where'd he go? Mark is extremely difficult to work with, especially in these last few hours. And what you guys took an hour to do, I just did in three seconds. So is there anything else I can help you with? It's, it's nearing down to zero hour time, and it's getting really bad. Running out of daylight, 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 running out of daylight. It's making us all crazy. God, he's crazy. Yeah, why do we put up with it then? I mean, honestly. I don't know. I have an obligation to my clients. These guys don't understand it. Squat, drop, and flush wouldn't know an obligation if it, if it, it stared them in the face, OK? I have them. I keep my word. I do my job. And if that means I'm crazy, then label me crazy. Gentlemen, we are about 45 minutes away from driving this thing, I think. Wouldn't and you? we're all leaving in half an hour, so. <laughs> yeah, it'll be in a hearse. Put that seat in? Yeah. So today I managed to work past all the idiots that were here, Darren, Josh, and Royal, dumb, dumber, and dumbest. 
and uh, got the 71 Charger done in spite of them, <laughs> in spite of them. The 71 Dodge Charger is considered the third generation Dodge Charger. The first generation being 1966 and 67, second generation 68 to 70, and then the third generation 71 to 74. Probably the most famous of all the Dodge Chargers was the Dukes of Hazzard 69 Dodge Charger made famous by the television show. Also the 68 Charger and Bullet. My personal liking has always been the 70 and the 71 Charger. It was truly one of the coolest and most unique cars that they had ever built. It was a very daring body style for it. Um, it went on to, to have the optional Hemi in it, 446 pack, you could have got a 444 barrel, 383 Magnum. I think just nearly every engine could even have it with a 340 in it or a slant six. I think it's one of the coolest ones and one of the most tempting and daring styles of its day. For me, I've always felt like I'm really blessed to be able to do what I love, make a living at it, and be able to share it with other people. We've got a 1971 Dodge Charger RT that is back on the road for the first time since 1978. That car, in some cases, would have been smashed at the wrecking yard, recycled, and turned into a soup can. And because of the passion that we have here at Graveyard Cars, we were able to find the car, bring it back from the dead, restore it to OE standards, and today, I get the luxury of driving it down the road. For me, it's an opportunity to get behind a 390 horsepower Dodge Charger and drive it up and down the streets where I grew up. These are great moments for me. I'm living my life, fulfilling my dreams right here in Springfield, Oregon, driving the cars that I grew up on. Do you think we had a pretty good week? No. I think we had a relatively good week. We had the uh, the 70 AAR, Chris Driscoll. Mm -hmm. For me to be able to go up to something like that, uh, to his place and to check out his cars and, and meet really cool people. He had the Hot Wheels track. I took all you guys to the hole on that one. You know, that AAR is going to be gorgeous. It's going to be great. On honestly, that AAR Cuda is going to be beautiful when it's done. I love the lemon twist yellow, black guts. Six pack, four speed. I mean, do I have to keep going? It's six a barrel. Not a six pack. Sorry. Well, I, I, <laughs> I apologize, and you are correct. Moduline cabinets. Absolutely, without a doubt. I don't care. Gorgeous. I, I buy them twice on Before Sunday. Before we had everything in cardboard boxes and stuff, it was just annoying trying to find what yep. we needed. Or the and old particle else. board cabinets. So it's really nice to have oh, those. Great, the great I cabinets. Just, uh, Mark Kane came out. Oh my! I don't want to talk about that. that my favorite thing in the whole wide world, Mark Kane. You the man, baby doll. Uh, awesome cabinet. Uh, showed us all the different medias, how they work, what you're supposed to use them on, and what you're not. We just never had any tools before. No, we had junk. You know what, I'm actually really happy about uh, the things we got done this week. The uh, 71 Charger 446 pack triple green car is completed to OE specifications and is now waiting for its owner to come get her. So the first one comes in oh. and it bends you over, and then the second one's your chin. Don't ever raise up against me. <laughs> and then the last one's the pile. How many times you're gonna do that? One too many times, fooling around. Okay. I'm gonna drop you, Mark.